After we've talked about lower bounds for error correcting codes, I now want to talk about upper bounds. And in this section, we'll specifically talk about Hamming codes, uh, the most well-known classic uh, error correcting codes, which, um, which are practically usable, useful, and are also just uh, a beautiful piece of theory. But before we go to Hamming codes, uh, we do the simplest possible thing um, that probably some of you have also thought about. And that's adding a parity bit. So we have our message of bits. Uh, in this case, it's nine bits. And we add one more bit. And that parity bit indicates whether in the nine previous bits, the number of ones is odd or even. In particular, if the number of ones is odd, then uh, the parity bit is one. It's the parity of the number of ones, and otherwise it's, it's zero. You can also write this as XORing the, uh, the bits together, which is uh, another way of saying you add them up modulo two, uh, all turns out to be the same thing. Uh, you could also say the parity bit is the bit that you have to add to a bit string so that the number of ones becomes even. All the same thing, uh, all comes down to a very simple, uh, same simple idea. The distance of such a code is two because, um, well, it's at most two because you only add one bit to any, to an arbitrary bit pattern. And it's actually uh, exactly two because you only take the uh, parity two, the, the even parity bit strings. And if you flip a single bit, you always change the parity. Okay. Um, so the distance is two, that implies it can uh, detect any single bit error. That comes from already from our uh, result from before. And uh, that's pretty much all it can do because distance two is not enough for correcting any errors. Uh, we cannot hope to get that. Uh, but parity bits are ubiquitous in many applications, especially because they're so simple, they're built into hardware devices uh, on many different levels. And it turns out they're also uh, a building block for more sophisticated codes. So they're very simple and cheap to do. They just add a single parity bit. And uh, that also, but well, we cannot detect any errors. Uh, but also that answers your question from before. Uh, so if I were to ask this question again now, uh, you would probably give a different answer. And, uh, well, maybe, maybe this is too boring. Do we, do we want to do it? Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm reaching the limit here. So, uh, the run, the right answer, uh, is one bit is enough. If you just want to detect a single bit error, you can do it with one extra bit. Uh, that's all that's needed. Okay. Now let's try to get error correcting codes. And I want to mention a typical application of this. Um, and that's uh, RAM, the working memory of a, of a heavy duty server where, where any downtime costs you a lot of money. And uh, if, well, you can, you can read about this, this background story here. In short, Random bit flips in RAM happen, and they happen fairly frequently. You will probably get one, uh, one bit flipped in your laptop every couple of weeks. And um, often nothing happens. Um, and that's due to many different reasons. Uh, but you can read about um, some, some guy tracking down uh, exactly that it can only be a twisted bit in main memory that caused a, a crash on his, on his laptop. It's very interesting. Uh, it's something we, we tend to ignore most of the time. Memory is perfect in our, in our mental models, but it, it's actually not. And these things are not so rare uh, as they might occur. So the question becomes, can we somehow correct a single bit without knowing where it occurred and uh, whether it occurred? And uh, so this seems a bit of a, of a fundamental question. Is there a way we can do this? at all, right? Um, 
And uh, the answer is, is definitely yes. And it's actually very simple. You can just store every bit three times. If there's only a single bit flipped, the two other ones will still indicate the right result. So when you read, you just do a majority vote of the three bits and you do whatever two or three say. If you're only flipping one bit, there will that will always uh, be correct. Uh, now, the, the problem with that is, uh, <laughs> let me show this comment if you have a, a manager who has to pay for this and you asking to triple the amount of memory you put into your server instead of giving it, uh, well, whatever, you, you can triple. <laughs> instead of giving it 16 gigabyte, you have to pay three times the price of that. He will probably uh, sack you. And uh, the result that I'll show you in this section is you can actually do this with just 11% of overhead. So you don't triple the cost, you add 11%. And that uh, for um, a better guarantee against potential downtime, which can be costly on a very different scale, that sounds like a very good compromise and a very good deal. So this is uh, what your boss will, will like. And that's why, that's why you should learn about Hamming codes.